I'm about to tell you guys something about me that not that many people know. Something that some people might be embarrassed of. Um, some people might reject this idea. Um, I am vegan. That was a bit dramatic, but <laughs> um, the, purpose, <laughs> the purpose of this speech is I'm not going to try to force like any kind of lifestyle change on you guys. I'm just going to inform you about some of the pros of eating plants and plant-based diet and some of the cons of eating an animal-based diet. Um, so yeah. Um, the few reasons that, the three reasons I'm going to go over are why you should do it for you, why you should do it for the animals, and why you should do it for the planet. And what I hope to accomplish by giving this speech is to just inform you guys all on the unintended and intended consequences that happen by eating animal products. Okay. So let's first talk about why you should do it for you. Um, let food be. Let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard that quote. It's by Hi Hippocrates, an ancient Greek philosopher. And I think this is a good quote talking about if you want to be healthy, you should put healthy food inside you. So we're going to talk about the human um, body. So just to be sure, I'm going to just talk about the intestines. Humans have much longer intestines than most carnivores, and that's so you have enough time to break down and absorb like the nutrients in the fiber and vegetables. And carnivores have really short intestines, so they can just like break down the meat. And with us eating meat, it gives them more time for bacteria to grow and it to rot, and that's just gonna give you like food poisoning and not fun stuff. Also, to be more specific, dairy. This is a study that was done at the University of Jane in Spain, and it just kind of shows some of the stuff that's in milk that you might not want to have in there, like anti, a lot of anti-inflammatory stuff that they give to the cows when they get, in, like their udders get infected from like the machine hooked up to them. And so that goes into your milk and into your body. And your health. So to go on with health, a quote from PETA was, if we were meant to eat meat, why is it killing us? People with a meat-based diet um, have a higher tendency of having getting diabetes or having um, obesity problems. And also carnivores don't develop hardened arteries like humans do when they eat an abundance of cholesterol and fat, which comes in animals. So it's just another proof that maybe we aren't supposed to be eating meat. And another fact about the milk thing was we're the only animals that drink other animals' milk. So I think that's just another thing to think about. So if doing it for your health isn't enough, then this is why you should do it for the animals. Humans aren't greater than animals. Um, I think it's under the same category as racism, sexism. Why do we have to say one species is better than the other? Why do we have to say to say we will love this animal, but we'll torture this other animal and eat it? Animals are living in prison-like conditions. I'm not. This is as graphic as it's going to get, so don't worry. But as some of you might know, they live in tight spaces. It's unsanitary, um, which is unhealthy for them and unhealthy for you guys because diseases are transmitted throughout the place. And if you are going to still eat meat, then you should probably eat like grass-fed, organic, free-range, where this isn't a problem and where it's not going to affect you in the end. Also, they are, they go through lots of torturous treatments. I like this picture, all mothers deserve respect. I think that's a good saying. Um, they're, they're mutilated, their beaks are cut off, baby chickens that are males are thrown in like a grinder minutes after they're born because they're deemed unprofitable. And um, I feel like people like to remove themselves from this when they eat meat, and I feel like if you're choosing to do that, that's something you should be aware of that's going on. And so, if eating plant-based diet for you and for animal rights isn't enough, you should do it for the planet. Um, I'm a sustainability minor, so I am really interested and in, really into like trying to you know lower your eco, um, your like footprint. And so, let's see. So here was something that Professor Tim Benton from University of Leeds said, and as you can see, is 
got a BA from Oxford and PhD in Cambridge, and he said, the biggest intervention people could make towards reducing their carbon footprints would not to be abandoned cars, but to eat significantly less red meat. And to me, I thought that was really like crazy because everyone, when you hear about like carbon emissions, the first thing you normally think about is like fossil fuels and driving cars that you know are gas guzzlers, and it's crazy. Just if you eat less red meat, you can significantly lower your footprint. And here's also a good graph. Um, it shows that, like in the meat lovers' diet, their carbon emission just for eating beef and lamb is equal to vegans' total carbon emission. And it just it's just like a good visual to see. And then here's some um, facts that I got from ChooseVeg.com, which is a reputable um, health website. And it just shows that, like, to raise animals for food, it emits more emissions than all forms of transportation combined. And to produce one um, pound of animal meat, it takes 13 times as much fossil fuel as it would to um, produce one pound of soy. And then another thing is, being, uh, when you, it takes more land to produce, um, the, the grain we use to, uh, for livestock can be used to feed um, the hungry. And in this picture it says, tonight this child will go to bed hungry, yet elsewhere in the world cattle eat 16 pounds of grain to just make one pound of beef. 70% um, of grain, grain grown is used to feed farm animals. That's 70% of the grain grown throughout the whole world, just for animals. And also like in here it said, like 50,000 pounds of tomatoes can grow on one acre of land, 53,000 pounds of um, potatoes and carrots, but only 250 pounds of beef can be grown on one acre of land. So that's a lot of land that's being taken up just for animals. And here was another good representation that I found on um, thinkprogress.org, which is an American political blog um, for progressive ideas. And to produce just one pound, I mean not one pound, one patty, it takes 6.5 pounds of grain um, per feed. Um, 52.8 gallons of drinking water for the cattle and irrigation, 74.5 square feet of grazing land, and over a thousand BTUs for um, feed production and transportation, which is all with, has to do with energy. So, now that you've been informed of these three reasons that I find um, are good motivators to have a more plant-based diet, um, I want you guys to think before you eat. Just think of where your food came from and what the animals had to go through to get to your plate. And remember how the meat affects humans, animals, and the planet. And I'll leave it with this quote. Why, um, we all love animals, why do we call some pets and others food?